In this video, we are beginning our final exam review by looking at an example involving marginal cost, revenue, and profit. And the example is from our final practice problems part one, question number three. And it reads, suppose an analyst estimates that the marginal profit for sales of X thousand smartphones is, and in question three, I want my function P prime of X to be equal to x times ln of x plus one, so that's the marginal profit function, in $1,000. And assume your fixed costs for this business are $50,000. Find the profit for selling 10,000 phones. So, so I first wanna give you all the opportunity to try this question. So I want you to pause the video for at least five minutes to make a serious attempt at this question. That's especially important when, practice, when practicing for a math exam, like a midterm or a final. Because as part of your studying, you're, you're trying to gauge how well do I understand how to do problems like this on my own. And taking these uh, five minutes to really try this is a valuable way to assess that. So four, three, two, one, pause the video. Pause it for five minutes to really try this question. All right, so hopefully you've done that. Hopefully you paused it and really made a serious attempt at this for about five minutes. So ultimately, okay, so let's talk about this together. Ultimately, the question is asking us to find a certain profit. The profit of selling 10,000 phones, which means it wants us to find P of, and the value that we plug in for X, the units of that are already in thousands. So instead of writing 10,000 in the parentheses, I would just write 10, and that's already indicating that this, is, this value is already in thousands. Okay, this question also tells me some information about fixed costs and what they are. So as review, remember that fixed costs equal the cost that we have even when there are zero items. Okay, so I could write that by saying C of zero, the cost of zero items. And in this case, it tells me that that's 50,000, but the units of money in this question are thousands of dollars. So I would write 50 rather than 50,000. Okay, so because the problem tells me what the derivative of profit is, but I need the original profit function, we're gonna need to take an antiderivative. So we can do this in two ways. Method one, I'm gonna do using an indefinite integral. And then later I'll talk about how we could set this up with a definite integral. So method one with an indefinite integral. So with these final review questions, because I'm giving longer periods of time to pause the video and try the question, I'm gonna go through the solution a little bit more quickly than I ordinarily would. Okay, because I'm assuming that some of these steps you likely have already done from trying the question. All right, so my profit function, I can get by taking the integral of P prime of X, X ln of X plus one DX. And to take this antiderivative, there are a couple of ways to do it. But one is to do integration by parts. It's also possible to do this by doing u substitution, at least first, but I can definitely do it with integration by parts. And if I do integration by parts, I gotta pick u and dv, and it's gonna be helpful to let u be the ln term because it has a simpler derivative, and let dv be the other stuff, so x dx. Then du, the derivative of this ln term is gonna be one over the inside, x plus one, but because the inside isn't just x, I need chain rule, and I'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is one, and then I have to make sure I write my dx. All right, and then for v, I take the antiderivative of x, which gives me x squared over two. So now we're ready to use our integration by parts formula, and we get px equals uv, so that is, x squared times ln of x plus one over two minus the integral of v du. So that'll give us x squared over two. 
times one over x plus one dx, that's the v du. All right, let's put this integration by parts section in a little bubble. All right, so we have our profit function p of x equals x squared times ln of x plus one over two. And in the integral, I can pull out the two and get a one half in front times integral of x squared over x plus one dx. And now for this integral, we can do u sub, and we would let u be equal to x plus one. And then du would be one, that's the derivative, and I gotta write dx with it. So if I use this u sub now, we get px equals x squared times ln of x plus one over two minus one half integral x squared on the top, then the denominator becomes u. I know dx is equal to du, but the issue is I have this lingering x squared term. So the way we can deal with that lingering term is we use our substitution again. So we use this again by isolating for the x. So if I move the one over, we get u minus one equals x. And I take that and I substitute it in where that x is. So that gives us p of x equals x squared times ln of x plus one over two minus one half integral u on the bottom and then du. And then I'll have something squared and it's u minus one being squared. All right, so now we gotta think about how do we evaluate this integral? Well, let's write the first part down. We got p of x equals x squared times ln of x plus one over two minus one half. And so the way we'd evaluate this integral is I would first expand the numerator the u minus one squared. That'll give me u squared minus two u plus one over that u on the bottom. So I could split this up. In fact, let me split it up right away. This would be, this would be, oops, u squared over u minus two u over u plus one over u, which becomes u minus two plus one over u. So now this is easy to take the antiderivative of. If we do the antiderivative, we'll get u squared over two minus two u plus ln absolute value of u. All right, so I'm moving that to give myself a little bit more room here. All right, that is my antiderivative. Close it, and this was an indefinite integral, so I gotta remember my plus c. All right, so we have our profit function here, um, but we did a u sub, so now I need to plug back in, because this is an indefinite integral. I need to get all my variables uh, to be x, that was the original variable. x squared ln of x plus one over two minus one half. In fact, I'm gonna do a couple of things now. I'm gonna distribute this minus one half to all of these terms, so that'll give me minus something over four, and then plus something, and then minus one half ln absolute value of something, and then plus c. So I'm leaving room because I gotta plug in for u. And remember, what was u equal to? It was x plus one. So that will give me an x plus one squared here, an x plus one in this parentheses, and then x plus one inside of that ln. Okay, so we have our profit in terms of x. Okay, so there are a fair number of steps to doing this integral, but we've, we've done the antiderivative. Okay, so we need to now find c. So we use our initial information. I use the fact that c of zero equals 50 to find c. So the profit, I can rewrite that as the revenue minus the cost. 
And that's going to be equal to this whole thing. So to save some time writing, I just copied it in. And now let's go ahead and plug in zero. Let's plug in x equals zero. On the left, we will get r of zero minus c of zero equals, on the right, I am going to get zero squared times ln of one over two minus one squared over four plus one minus one half ln absolute value of one plus c. All right, and I know that the revenue from selling zero items is zero. The revenue from selling zero items is zero, so r of zero is zero. And c of zero we knew, we knew c of zero is 50. So on the left hand side I end up with a negative 50 equals, and on the right this term becomes zero, and then the other ln of one, that's going to become zero. So we're left with minus one fourth plus one plus c. And if I rearrange this to isolate for c, and I get a common denominator, we get negative 203 over four equals c. So now let's plug that back into my profit function. All right, so I've copied down our profit function, and I'm gonna plug in for the c. So where I have this plus c, let's write what c was. It was negative 203 over four. And I need to now plug in x equals 10 to get the profit the question wanted. Okay, so that gives me p of 10 equals 10 squared times ln of 11 over two minus 11 squared over four plus 11 minus one half ln absolute value of 11 and then minus the two over 203 over four. Okay, so I know 100 squared, I know that that is 100. And I know that ln of absolute value of 11, well, absolute value of 11 is just 11. So I noticed that the two terms that have this ln of 11, both have a two on the denominator. So those are like terms. So simplifying and combining them, we end up getting 99 ln of 11 over two. So the absolute value I don't really need around this 11 because 11 is already positive. And then if I get a common denominator with the constant terms, the 11 here becomes 44 divided by four. And if I combine all of those terms, we will end up with minus 280 over four. So this gives us that the profit when x is 10 is 99 ln of 11 over two. And then 280 over four is 70, so minus 70. And what were the units of profit here? The units of profit, it said were in thousand dollars, thousands of dollars. So we have this, thousand, dollars. If I wanted to round this or if I wanted to convert it to dollars, I could plug this into a calculator and this ends up being about 48.69582 and that's in thousands of dollars. And I could put this in dollars by multiplying it by a thousand and if I multiply by a thousand, it's gonna move that decimal three spots over to the right. So I'll get four eight six nine five point eight two. And then I would put a comma here just so it reads a little bit better. And that is my answer. So I mentioned at the start of the problem that it's also possible to do this with a definite integral. So I'm gonna end the video by briefly sketching what that would look like, but we won't work it out fully because a lot of the steps are the same. So method two is, well, what if I did a definite integral? So 
So with a definite integral, we would want to take the integral from 0 to 10. Those are the two x values that we're sort of interested in. What's happening initially, because that relates to the fixed cost. And then what's happening at 10, and we were taking the integral of the derivative p prime, or marginal cost function. So if I use, if I just evaluate this integral uh, by taking an antiderivative, the antiderivative would give me my profit function p of x. But then I need to plug in the 0 and plug in the 10. So this comes from Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, part 2. All right, so. I know that on the left-hand side, we have the integral from 0 to 10. My function that was given to us was x times ln of x plus 1 dx equals, on the right side, plugging in 10, we get p of 10, minus plugging in 0, we get p of 0. And for p of 0, we could rewrite this as r of 0, so revenue, and then minus c of 0, so minus the cost because profit is revenue minus cost. And just as before, I could sub in for the revenue and the cost. The revenue of selling zero items, like before, we got that that is zero. And then minus C of zero is my fixed cost. And we saw that that was 50 already. Okay, so now, remember, we want to isolate for P of 10. So if I get P of 10 by itself, we will get that it equals this integral from 0 to 10, x ln of x plus 1 dx. But on the other side, so we had this minus and then negative 50, so that's a positive 50. And if I move that over to the other side, that gives me minus, minus 50. And that sets it up for us. And from here, we just need to compute this integral. But that's almost essentially, that's almost exactly the same as what we did earlier uh, in method one. So I'm just gonna put dot, 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 and leave that for you to try. And one final comment that I wanna make about this problem is, when we were doing this integral, it's also possible to begin this integral with u sub first. I wanted to do it by integration by parts, just so that I get, got to talk about so many different techniques. Got to talk about integration by parts. Later we did a u sub, and that u sub involved doing this substitution again. So there were so many different things that we got to review this way, which is why I chose this method for the video.